I am Shirley Ann Barber James. I served as the 15th National President of Jack and Jill of America Incorporated, 1994 through 1996. The fondest memories of being a mother in Jack and Jill of America Incorporated actually had to do with experiences in establishing relationships with other mothers. I can remember, for instance, the first time I attended a Southern Region, Southeastern Regional Mothers Conference. It was in Sarasota, Florida. And that was the time that I could say that I was actually baptized into Jack and Jill and understood what it meant to be a Jack and Jill mother, what it meant to be a member of Jack and Jill of America Incorporated, what it meant in reference to what kinds of experiences and advantages my children would be able to have as being a member of Jack and Jill of America Incorporated. And then also understanding what my role and my responsibility would be towards the children in my community and what I could do to help them and teach my children how to be servant leaders. But that was an experience I will just never forget. It, like I said before, it was like my baptism. Then the next stage of that happened at the national convention that I attended in Chicago, Illinois. I met Dr. E. Versi Wanton on the elevator and was so mesmerized by her with the brief conversation that we had. We had a connection with Savannah and Thunderbolt, Georgia. But then when I saw her again, maybe later that day or that evening, she addressed me by my name. And it just amazed me that this woman that I had just met would call me by name. And it was something that I always admired about her because no matter who she met, where she met them, and over the years that we had had a wonderful relationship because she became a mentor of mine, she always would call a person by name. I may be a person that will remember a face, but I could not always call you by name. But I met other wonderful women uh, during th that particular time, just as I did in Sarasota, who had become lifelong friends and um, had relationships that were so meaningful to me that it just inspired me to be in position to want to serve the organization not necessarily in a leadership position, I just wanted to do my part. But these women saw something in me evidently. Dr. Linda Jolivet was one of them. Adele Baker was another one. My best friend in Jack and Jill and my neighbor and my church member and my sister, Maddie Johnson, who stuck by me through everything. But I met women like Sylvia McGee and Pat Wilker, and um, I could go on and on. Uh, Susan Johnson out of Texas, out of Austin, Texas. There are just so many women that I had established lifelong relationships with. But when you talk about being a mother in Jack and Jill of America Incorporated, the other thing is that you become a mother to the other children across the nation. Um, I do recall a mother giving me a telephone call one evening. Her son was driving from Florida up to somewhere in the Northeast. Um, and this was in the month of March around St. Patrick's Day here in Savannah, simply because during St. Patrick's Day weekend or week, there is absolutely no place in the world that you can stay in a hotel. That mom called because Savannah was kind of like the midpoint, very concerned about her son driving. This is late at night. And the mere fact that that mother felt comfortable enough to call me, and I could say, well, of course, why not? They can, you know, he can stay here with us. This was sort of like the 
midway point between that trip. And the son had called back and said, I don't have any place that I could stay, mom, what do I do? The mother called. So that kind of relationship, and I've been able to call moms about my children, and I've heard those same kinds of stories. So being a mother in Jack and Jill of America Incorporated, you are a mother to all of the children. When I'm asked about becoming or choosing to serve as a leader in Jack and Jill of America Incorporated, I can't truthfully say that I chose to be the leader or to be a leader. I think what happened, as I said previously, some people and some mothers evidently saw something in me and thought that I could lead. And I more or less responded to their asking me to do that. In particular, even in my local chapter, I did serve as president, I served as a teen sponsor, I served as program director, but those were positions that I was asked to take. And since I had made this commitment, and once I, like I said, once I became baptized into, into this organization, I wanted to do my part. And I would accept a task or accept something that I believed in because I knew if I accepted it, I could give it 100% plus. So maybe those kinds of behavior or uh, skills on my part of completing tasks and giving it all, um, maybe those were the kinds of qualities that other persons saw in me. For instance, even when the position for National Corresponding Secretary became available, Dr. Linda Jolivet asked me, would I run for that position? And I said, I think I was shocked, but she said, I think that you will do a good job. And I had so much respect for her that I didn't want to disappoint her, but also I felt that if she had enough confidence to say that I could take on a national leadership position, and I had not done any leadership per se on the regional level, then I said, if she had that kind of confidence in me, and then with the urging and encouragement of my friend, Maddie Johnson, then I said, okay, I think I can do this. And that's how my journey into leadership on the national level began. When I reflect on what I might be most proud of while serving as national president of Jack and Jill of America Incorporated, there is no one thing. Um, I can start by saying I thought it was important that our members be engaged in the decision-making process of this organization, that our members be engaged in setting the direction that the organization should go, and that they understood that that was their responsibility. The leadership was in place to carry out their wishes. So as a result, um, we set in motion and put together a strategic planning committee. Uh, I mentioned Susan Johnson before out of uh, Austin, Texas. She was a member. Um, Joyce Carter out of South Suburban Chicago was a member of that particular committee. But they put together a strategic plan with something that we had not done before because I was interested in continuity in reference to what our organization would be about. Each leadership team that would come in, even though we would have our own mission and ideas and goals that we would accomplish, but it was important to me that we continued what the previous administration had done. And so we would not lose what our objective and mission of the organization is. So continuity was important. So in addition to that, um, I got mothers engaged by setting up a public relations committee on the national level. Um, we also, 
put together a computer techni technical committee, believe it or not, um, to look into uh, establishing a website, to getting a membership database uh, for communication purposes with our members. Um, a lot of it had to do with the infrastructure of the organization uh, in reference to putting some programs in place. We looked at one of the first teen leadership um, components that we could offer. We also um, began when at our national conventions um, putting together at the, the very first time bringing in our newly elected presidents and vice presidents of leadership the day before so that they could get some orientation and training about what the organization would be about and how they should conduct themselves at the national convention and understand again understand what their responsibility is their role and responsibility in this organization not only on the local level but they were responsible for giving leadership direction the other thing I can mention that I was proud of as well is um, having the first Promise Summit and we were able to as an organization to be at the Alex Haley Farm and Jack and Jill of America Incorporated was actually the first national organization not affiliated with the Children's Defense Fund to be able to be on site at the farm. So we are registered and we made history uh, by doing that. And the Promise Summit, what we did, we brought together and we did extend invitations to leaders of other national organizations because I was very much interested in collaborations. What we did, our National Executive Board for Jack and Jill of America Incorporated met and we also invited those candidates for national office um, who were interested. And we came together so that we could put together a plan of continuity uh, so that the next leadership that came in would understand what the role and responsibility of the leadership is to carrying on the mission and goals of, of our and objectives of our organization. We also concentrated on putting together a plan that chapters could use to formulate collaborations within their own communities. Because what we thought and what we still think and I think what is happening in Jack and Jill of America today is that we are collaborating with other organizations because our impact is much greater if we get with other organizations of like objectives and like missions and in our reach to children in our communities, the impact is much greater in, uh, other than our just doing it ourselves. So, I mean, there are probably some other things that I could talk about, but those are some that I'm most proud of. Jack and Jill of America Incorporated has evolved, in my opinion, into an organization that is finally recognized nationally by other groups, by other organizations as what I would call a premier family-oriented organization. We actually are the only organization that was organized around family and organized to place emphasis on training children, training our children to be servant leaders. Other organizations have recognized that. And in particular, I would say the Junior League, for instance, of which I'm a member. Because um, since joining the Junior League, they now have a component where their children are active in certain aspects of what Junior League does. So we actually, as an organization, um, set a role model um, for how families can be involved in serving a community. In terms of its relevancy, in the 1960s when Jack and Jill of America was founded, um, basically we were founded for the purpose of providing for our children opportunities 
um, educationally, socially, culturally, that were not afforded to us because of the times, um, because of the times that I grew up in, uh, when there were segregated, sometimes they say equal, separate but equal, but more separate than equal. But Jack and Jill provided um, that opportunity and those experiences for our children. In doing so, we also provided experiences and opportunities for other children. What I see happening and what has evolved into this period of time, up to now into the 21st century, we have evolved from, let's say, segregation, separate but equal, our children, our children, my children and my grandchildren grew up in an atmosphere where there was presumably equality. They grew up in an atmosphere where there was multicultural, multi-ethnic opportunities. Um, they weren't necessarily judged by the color of their skin, but more by the content of their character, their abilities. It disturbs me it, on this very day in December of 2016 that my children, my grandchildren, our children Jack and Jill of America Incorporated may experience something a little different from how they have lived their lives thus far. And so it's almost like you think in one respect the clock may turn back, but in another respect I see Jack and Jill taking a more active role in teaching children, exposing, assisting them, and helping them to understand their worth, helping them to understand their value, helping them to understand the importance of continuing to get all of the education and experience just life in general uh, that they can. I think that we have an obligation as well in our communities uh, to teach about the structure of our government, to teach history, uh, especially African American history, and just do those kinds of things so that our kids will have a more stable mindset and will be able to cope with whatever may happen. The role that I think Jack and Jill of America Incorporated must play, especially during this time and on this day in December 2016, about which I'm concerned, is that it becomes our responsibility now to educate, especially about the governmental process in this country. It's our responsibility to expose everyone to African American history. It's our responsibility to help young people understand their worth, their value, and the importance of their obtaining an education, of being um, culturally exposed uh, to everyone, of learning and making sure that there's mutual respect of everyone, regardless of race, regardless of culture, regardless of background. And it's just something that we need to do not only for our children, but for all children, uh, so that they'll be able to cope with what's about to come. The thing that I love most about Jack and Jill of America Incorporated is that we are a family organization and that our mothers are mothers, our fathers are fathers to all of our children. And we extend that relationship of being a mother and a father to other children in our community. Um, and we do take opportunity to serve and to lead and to mentor.
My dream for the future of Jack and Jill of America Incorporated is that we will continue to be a viable organization, one that is nationally recognized, one that is nationally respected, one that will always be in the forefront in supporting and encouraging and advocating for children, especially through legislative matters. Um, I do think that we need to make our voices heard. Um, we are a strong voice. And if we do that, then the future, not only for our children, but for children throughout this nation uh, will be much better. And because it is the future that we are concerned about and our children are the future and someone, these children have to be the ones that take our places so that we must train them, we must encourage them, we must show them that they are the ones that we are working for now, but we're passing the baton to them. And they'll have to do the same thing and pass the baton to the next generation. So if we and Jack and Joe can do that, then that's my dream. I would like my legacy to be summed up in probably three statements. One, that I would hope that my work, my words, and my interactions with other persons defined who I am. Secondly, and I take this quote um, that I lived, I learned, and I passed it on. And thirdly, that everything that I have done with my life and through my life that there was an understanding that I was doing it and forging ahead for future generations. Promise, and I select that word because when I ran for national office, for national president, that was part of my goal to effect PROMISE. And PROMISE is the acronym for pooling the resources of many to inspire, save, and educate.